After five months and eight weekends, it's time to crown a champion. The best snowcross racers in the world have gathered on the historic hills of Grand Geneva, Wisconsin. Are you ready for the finale of Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram? Find out next, live on the CBS Sports Network. fans and welcome to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin site for round 17 of Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram, the final race of the season. It's the Ram Truck Snowcross Grand Finale presented by Nielsen Enterprises. Kate Osborne, Mike Schroeder and a cast of thousands joining me, Chris Hockey, bringing you coverage of the final race of the season. We've got so many storylines, but the biggest one is the points race. Let's find out how we got here. Here's a recap of round 16. Second lead over Tucker Hibbert. Tucker has cut it in half. The 10 time and defending champion, the T train, Tucker Hibbert, is your man on point, but he's not done the Joker lap. The T train comes down the hill. Has he built a big enough lead to withstand the Joker lap? He finds his way down. At the bottom of the hill, he'll have to take the Joker here. Here goes Tucker Hibbert up the hill. At the very top of the hill, where's Cody Cam? That's not Cam. No. So once again, the T-Train got it done in Lake Geneva. Mike, here are the points heading into the finale. I'll tell you what, what more could you ask for? It's boiled down to this last round. Tim Tremblay with a mere two-point lead over Cody Cam. Every point, every heat, and the final are going to be huge today. Cannot wait. Tucker Hibbert is with our Kate Osborne. The racer who ended up on top of the box in Pro Open was Tucker Hibbert. Kind of a bit of a redemption night from round 15 into round 16. But strategy played a big part for you, especially as a veteran. Why? Uh, this race, you know, with the Joker lane, uh, it's something we only do at this uh, this event all year. So it's a little bit different. And, you know, there's a... Uh, a few different ways to appro approach it for sure, you know, and I kind of had a plan if I was up near the front that I would wait till the end, uh, if I was in the lead especially, but um, yeah, you know, I just kept hammering, hammering, trying to get by Cody, and uh, I was taking a lot of roost, so I was considering going earlier on the Joker lane, but then he went, you know, one of the laps I was thinking about it, so I was I was thankful for that to get a little clean air and uh, breathing room to, to hammer out some hard laps and make up some time, so it worked out great, you know, the track was really, really rough and challenging, and uh, you know, I just kept pushing, trying to find new lines that were faster and not make mistakes and uh, just keep pushing right to the end. Yeah, and as Tucker told me earlier, it's important not only to win everything that goes out there, but definitely win the last race of the season as you head into the offseason. That's right, Kate. We started this season in November, and it all ends today. Stick around. We get racing right after this. It's Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. Oil Championship Snowcross, powered by Ram on Senia Sports Network, is sponsored by Polaris, Terrain Domination, by Pertec, Hydraulic and Industrial Hose Service, by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups, and by Ski Doo Snowmobiles. What matters is what's next. And welcome back to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, the final race of the Amsoil Championship Snow Cross season. Kate Osborne, Mike Schroeder, my name is Chris Hockey. That's a fantastic racetrack. Let's give you the best look possible with a GoPro lap of the day, Mike. Interesting way around this racetrack. Watch as we take a ride with Cody Camp. Come across the finish line, then there's a rhythm section down by what we call the old oak tree. Now, this is normally the transition area where they come off the starting grid and up that big uphill climb, that first uphill. There's some rhythm up at the top, and they've got a 
couple of different paths that they can take here. Two different lines. Now we get ready for the big send-off. This is where they fly down that big skidoo chute. They get to the bottom of the hill, and again, a couple of different lines that they can take before they make the second uphill. It's a big uphill. you got to charge with a lot of power. Try to line up what you're going to do. Go inside, outside, before you make the left-hander and come back down the U.S. Air Force flyaway. Now, there is a joker lap here, meaning that at least once these drivers are going to have to go up, just as Cody's doing here, go by the Ram truck, come back down the Ram runaway, Away. Then they square away, take that short shoot into the final turn on the racetrack, which is the FXR turn, hit for the Amsoil finish line, and that is a GoPro lap of the day. That is a great racetrack. Let's get started. Here's your pro open qualifier lineup. Well, you take a look at this. There's three of the top five in points here with Hibbert, Narza, and Cody Cam. It's going to be a great heat race. You know what? Let's go racing. Kate Osborne is down trackside. The current points leader, Tim Tremblay, came into the Lake Geneva weekend 28 points ahead of Cody Cam. He went to bed last night after round 16, only two points ahead of him today. I talked to Cody Cam about what he needs to do, and he says he's going to keep doing what he's done all weekend, win those heats. He also knows that Tim Tremblay has a little bit more pressure on him, as it's harder to defend than it is to attack. It's in the starter's hand. And Tucker Hibbert gets the stunt boy hole shot before the moment Cody Cam into the lead. Both the Hentges sleds went way to the outside. There you see Cody Cam out front. That is going to be Tucker Hibbert and Narsa right behind him. Wow, Cody Cam out front and very fast already this afternoon. The 53 came in two points down and he wants those bonus points, Mike. To go to the top of the hill. He came in really hot in the bottom part of the hill, was able to gather it up. And again, you've got to almost kind of check your emotions. You know, you've got to be on an even keel here. Just run the racetrack. Race the racetrack that's in front of you as he makes his way through and down to the FXR corner. So Cody Cam is your leader, but Tucker Hibbert is right on his tail. Over the Amsoil finish line. It's Cam, it's Hibbert, it's Peter Narsa, then Corin Todd and Andrew Lindholm. The 53 from Kenosha, Wisconsin, heads up the hill, but Tucker Hibbert goes to his inside. Now, Hibbert working. He knows what he needs to do here this afternoon, and you've talked about him being, you know, Mr. Saturday Night. I've seen him race many, many times here on Sunday afternoon, and he is always tough at the final race of the year here at Grand Geneva. The pressure has been on Cody Cam every race of this weekend here in Lake Geneva, and he's answered the call every time. He's doing it again on Sunday afternoon. Skating through that rhythm section on the top part of the second uphill. You'll see him res uh, resurface there and come down the U.S. Air Force flyaway. Here comes Tucker Hibbert. Yeah, Hibbert making up some ground on him. Cody Cam over that nice set of doubles and into the FXR final turn. When they get to the Amsoil finish line, it will be three laps to go in this pro open qualifier, and Cam is still on point. Well, he went big there, was able to bring the nose back down. That could have really been ugly for him down by the old oak tree was watching the differential between Cam and Hibbert. It was the same last lap as the lap before, so almost identical lap times. But here again, there's parts of this racetrack that Tucker again looks to be a little bit faster than Cody. Cody Cam pulls away, and Kate Osborne has more on our leader. Well, as we know, this is day three at Lake Geneva, and a lot of times these guys are extremely tired. Cody says on day three before in the past, He's actually been really tired. He woke up this morning feeling really good. He says this is going to be a long day, even though in reality it's a midday race. Yeah, a long day. And let me tell you, he may be feeling good, but he's feeling the pressure of the T-train right now as they come through the Air Force flyaway. Hibbert just waiting for Cody to make a little bobble that he can advance on him and try to get underneath him and pass him. Hasn't happened yet. There were a couple of times that, you know, Cody looked like he was going to have an issue, but was able to gather it back up, two laps left to go. Wow, Cody Cam with big air takes the outside line. Watch Tucker now, Tucker cut down the inside again, but yet again, didn't have a good run through the rhythm section. He was gonna try charge hard on the uphill, didn't pay off for him. It certainly didn't, and Cody Cam lengthens the lead at the top of the hill quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Now to the big downhill. Cody Cam in lead with a lap and a half to go here in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. 
Takes that right hand turn hill, head back up the hill. Tucker reels him in again. Now Tucker likes the inside line on this turn. Let's see if he can make a move. Not close enough there. Top of the hill and a left hander. And down the Air Force flyaway comes Cody Camp. With Tucker taking almost the same identical line in parts of these racetracks that, uh, that Cody is. Here he goes to the inside. Let's see if he can make this work at all for him headed into the FXR corner. Tucker looks to the inside, but Cam gets out. Over the end zone finish line, the white flag flies. One lap to go for Cody Cam. Big triples, and again, the extreme outside line for Cam. He heads up the hill for the final time. Roost in the face of Tucker Hibbert, has to dip his chin. Boy, you made that work for him. I thought Tucker may have been able to make up a little ground the way Tucker ran that line, but it didn't work for him. Cody's still out in front. Tucker's gonna have to charge hard here down the downhill and up that second uphill. Down the hill for the final time. Into the Fox turn. Cody Cam. Back up the hill he goes. A comfortable lead at the moment for Cody Cam. Here comes Tucker. Not enough to move there. And now down the Air Force flyaway for the final time in this Pro Open qualifier. Tucker gonna try downhill. Nope. I think Tucker knows that, you know, really he hasn't found a good spot to make a move on him. Into Cody. the FXR final turn. And this is gonna be Cody. Checkers fly, and the Pro Open qualifier goes to Cody Cam. And a massive statement there for the young man from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Tucker Hibber comes across in second, Peter Narsa in third. today or is the pressure still on for you yeah I'm not gonna think about that uh, still gonna think I'm in second place still got two more races to go so uh, just uh, gonna ride strong and get the whole shot again he did come in here and he jokingly said ha, nothing to worry about it at all he's full of confidence and right now the points lead Cody cam takes the first shot this afternoon here in Lake Geneva Stick around, the Pro Light Final is coming up next. This is Amsoil Championship Snow Cross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. Hello everybody, welcome back to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin site for round 17, the final round of Amsoil Championship Snow Cross powered by Ram. It's the Ram Truck Snow Cross Grand Finale presented by Nielsen Enterprises. Kate Osborne, Mike Schroeder, my name is Chris Aki. It's been a fantastic season. Let's take a look at everything that went on up till now. Eight weekends, the only route for those bold enough to battle for the title, world's greatest snowcross racer. As it has for a quarter century, the championship chase begins on the hollowed hills of Spirit Mountain in Duluth. What isn't there to love about snowcross? In pro open, Lincoln Lemieux on a skidoo grabbed the stud boy hole shot, took off and never looked back. Congrats to Team Amsoil, double trouble on the podium with Lemieux and Tim Tremblay. It's known as the Daytona of Snowcross. The big wide track at Canterbury Park was packed inside and out. In Pro Open, a kinder, gentler Elias Ishul was on the prowl. The Viking Rocket went from checkers to wreckers to slow and steady for his first pro victory of the season. Round seven and eight rolled into Deadwood, South Dakota, where the Old West comes alive. The standing room only crowd witnessed Ross the Boss Martin strike gold in Deadwood. And when the snow dust settled, it was a Polaris sweep on the podium. A massive track in upstate New York means big air will get you there. But once again, there was no doubt about it. Team Lavalli's Evan Doubt was on a roll. In the last four races, number 413 has been number one. Evan Doubt has won in Salamanca, New York. Snowcross in Iowa? You better believe it. Tyson Snowcross National settled the question, who's the king of Sundown Mountain? 
The world's greatest snow cross racers took aim at the Dirty Dozen, a steep downhill section that was not for the meat. And on this day, Cody Cam is the man. The Polaris racer was in full dominator mode. After five months and eight weekends, we've arrived at Grand Geneva. As Snowcross lore has it, this challenging track will help write another page in the history book. So the Pro Light Series wraps up its season on that great racetrack right after this. The Pro Light Final is next. It's Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. Geneva, Wisconsin. We're about to go racing for round 16 for the Pro Light, 17 for Amsoil Pro Open. It's Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. That is a great racetrack. It's provided lots of action all weekend long. It's going to do the same today. The Pro Light class, Mike Schroeder, has been so much fun to watch all year long, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves before we remember what happened in round 15. Pro Light final tonight. A massive lead for that young man right now. To call it a dominating performance from that young man would be an understatement. One lap to go for the 177 of Jake Ango from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. We follow your leader down the hill for the final time. It's now a 12 second lead for that young man. Here he comes through the FXR final turn. The checkers and the flames fly. Jake Ango has won in Lake Geneva. So Jake did everything he could last night. Here's how the points look today, Mike. Hockey Palaya sitting comfortably on top of the standings there. Just needs to have a good finish here in the Pro Light Final. There is, however, room for movement within the top 10 here. It'll be interesting to see how they end up. It certainly will be. Jake is with our Kate Osborne right now. One racer who has a target on his back in Pro Light is Jake Angove. Now, Jake, you are the only racer who's been on the box since New York in every single race. What changes have been made since we've been talking about that mid-season hurdle? Uh, I, I kind of just had a couple bad races and then went home and just regrouped uh, mentally and physically. I just had some good practice days on the sled and the team worked really hard and got the sled ripping and uh, I've been getting starts and just feel good. The whole program's just working good right now. Um, so yeah, it's just the team's, team's got me ripping. I feel good. and. Everything's just coming together, so it's it's good. It did come together for him in round 15 as he had a dominating win. We'll see how he comes out on top or not here today. Yeah, it was dominating. So here's your starting lineup for today's Pro Light Final. Now your points leader, your number one qualifier, Aki Palaya. Then you see the two Judnick Motorsport sleds and the rest of the front row for this Pro Light Final. And here is your back row for the final. Well, these drivers having to make it through the LCQ to be in the final. That doesn't mean they can't win the race. It's going to be a good, good race. It certainly should be. The racers are at the starting line, and Kate Osborne is trackside. The Pro Light Championship was clenched this morning by Aki Palaya in the heats. Now the pressure may be off for him, but the pressure is on for many of these other riders as they may be looking for rides for next season or perhaps moving up with the big guys, the Pro Open class. And they're racing in Wisconsin. 15 sleds up the hill. And Zach Mason with the stunt boy hole shot, but Jake Angove goes around him on the inside. But and look at this. Aki Palaya going with him. Oh, and Angove, Angove goes checked. high. So Aki Palaya into the lead on the Jimmy John sled. Down the hill they come, and we'll set the field for you as soon as we can. But a giant move for Jake Angle there as he was stuck at the top of the hill momentarily. So you've got Aki Palaya out in front, and it's Lorenz who's going to slot into that number two position. And go slotted in about fourth or fifth, if I'm not mistaken. We'll set the order after they come down the hill here. A little bit of a jump through the FXR corner and across the Amsoil finish line for that first lap. We've talked about it all season long. The man on point right now, Aki Palaya, has been 
so consistent at every racetrack. Even at the tracks he doesn't feel comfortable on, he's found a way near or on the podium every weekend. And right now, he's winning this race, looking for the championship as well. Up the hill goes the 128. Into the turn, and already a nice lead for Aki Palaya. Kate Osborne's got more on our lead. When you're talking about Aki liking tracks that he feels comfortable at, this is definitely one of them. He said he likes this way more than he likes those tied ovals with both right and left handers, and it makes for different lines to pass. Obviously, he's comfortable here. Obviously, he's performing well, and right now, he wants that championship for sure. No doubt, hands dance, he's pumped about it. So it's Palaya, Lorenz, and Mason, your top three, then Ogmar Helgren and Jake Angove right now slotted in fifth place in this pro-life final. Boy, Aki, a nice win here would be nothing more than an exclamation point to and mark to that championship drive that he's had all year long. Like you said, we've talked earlier about the fact that there for a while we didn't see him on the top of the box, but he was always in third or fourth place. Just very consistent in all the racetracks that he went to. That outside line seems to be the fast way through that section of the racetrack. And right now, Aki Palaya has an almost two-second lead over Nicholas Lorenz. Again, Aki Palaya from Finland has been great all season long. And look at this. Nicholas Lorenz out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, has reeled him in a bit. He has really started making up some ground on the uphill here. You see him charging on the downhill. He'll stay the inside line, same as what Aki does. And you can see how close uh, that 128 skidoo is to the 572. Polaris of uh, Nicholas Lorenz. Lorenz looks to the outside at the top of the hill. You don't see many people taking that line throughout the afternoon, but it works for Lorenz as he reels in Aki a little bit again. Last time around, it was a 1.8 second lead for Aki. I'm not sure it'll be the same this time. You know, when we look at that downhill, our perspective, it looks like that line that they're taking is really rough and the other side is smoother. Could look totally different from the top. Three laps to go in the final pro light final of the season. And the man who led the points coming in is your leader right now, Aki Palaya. This is your battle for third. That's Zach Mason and Marcus Ogmar Helgren battling for the final spot on the podium. Zach Mason had the stud boy hole shot here but just fell back in the pack. I think he got stuck behind the Jake Angove incident, was able to then get around him, and now sits in third place. Zach Mason for Lavalle Racing in third right now, and Kate Osborne's got more on him. Now remember, guys, Zach Mason hasn't raced here in years due to some of those injuries and things he was working through. He said this is not a track that you can go just out and test in like normal. These uphills and downhills make it very sketchy. He said, as Cody Cam said this weekend, you just got to send it. And he is doing that right now. You see that battle for the lead happening right in front of him as well as Jake Angove, I should say Zach Mason, stretches out a bit. I did see Jake Angove for a moment there behind Helgren, so looks like he wants to get into this battle for the top five as well. And there's your battle for the lead. Somehow, with two laps to go, Aki Palaya continues to hold off a charging Nicholas Lorenz, Boy, Lorenz here in Lake Geneva. Taking it down to about a second. This is where he seems to be fast, too. Look at Nicholas on the uphill here. Charges hard. Then you get that little flyaway up into the corner. Not close enough to try to challenge anything on the top, but uh, yeah, Lorenz charging hard. Down the hill comes your leader, Palaya. Down the hill and into that Fox turn. Lorenz reels him in a bit once again. But not enough as really fast out of that turn was Aki Palaya. At the very top of the hill, he'll take that left and head down the Air Force flyaway once again. A lap and a half away from a win and a championship is Aki Palaya. And for the moment, you see Zach Mason just to the left of your screen starting to get into the battle for a second himself. And yeah, that tightened up. He was back about four seconds. That is really, really tightened up. We'll throw some intervals here with one lap left to go. So Palaya's got about a second on Nicholas Lorenz, and now it's only about 1.6 seconds back to Zach Mason. So the three riders who want this win, you can throw a blanket over them, and Aki Palaya leads them up the hill. Less than a lap to go. At the top of the hill, Lorenz looks to the inside. A little bit of a bump at the top. Palaya leads him down the hill for the final time. See if Nicholas goes inside or outside here. I think he's gonna stay on the outside. He does, let's see if he can pick up some speed here and charge on the uphill. I think he lost some ground there. 
Let's see if he takes this outside line at the top. He does once again. Pelaya to the inside. Lorenz to the outside at the top of the hill. Here comes Nicholas Lorenz. Boy, they look like they were going to be bar to bar. Now Nicholas is going to go inside. Try to charge him on the downhill. He got him for the moment, but Pelaya gets it back. Headed for the FXR final turn in the final race of the season. Out of the turn, headed for the checkers. The flames will fly. Aki Palaya has won the pro life final in Lake Geneva. What a race for the final race of the season. It goes Palaya, Lorenz, Mason, Ogmar, Helgren, and Jake Angove in that order. We'll come right back and talk to the winner of that race and your season champion in the pro light. This is AMS Oil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. took home that win you're taking home the championship how special is it to come here to the states and be able to take home the championship back to finland well it's awesome uh, that's why i came here and uh, i succeed so not bad <laughs> <laughs> i'd say not bad at all and guys you're right we did see him there at the start of the season and he came out glowing for sure occupy at number one here in pro light what a season and here's how they finish today mike a great race for Aki Palaya. Aki Palaya, your number one qualifier. He takes the win, takes the championship. I'd say all in all, round 16, very kind of him. Nicholas Loren, Zach Mason, tough break for Jake Andrew. There you see how the top 10 finished. And here's how your points looked. And the points end up like this. Aki Palaya is your champion. Congratulations to him. And Gov Lorenz teammates end up 2-3. And there again, the top 10 in points for the pro light class. I am so excited. That means next is the Amsoil Pro Open Final, the finale of the season. It's Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on the CBS Sports Network. Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Air Force. Aim high. By Amsoil, protect your weekend. And by Arctic Cat, share our passion. And we are racing in Wisconsin. Up the hill they go. So the man in black, Tim Trembling, is your points leader. And right now, he's trying to get around Kyle Pauline for those all important points towards the championship. A little bit of contact. Can't make the move there. Kyle Pauline out front for the moment. Kyle Pauline wins the Pro Open Qualifier number one here in Lake Geneva. So the qualifiers are in the books. It's almost time for the final. Mike, here's your point standings heading into that. Tremblay came in with a two-point lead. He is now down 10. He's got a hill to climb. Can it be done? It can be, but Cody Camp, your points leader right now. We're about to go green. Here's your starting lineup. Let's take a look at him. Cody Camp, your number one qualifier. Kyle Pauline, Narsa, Tremblay, Hibbert. There you see him. Remember, they line up in reverse order, so it could affect how they line up on the starting grid. And here's your back row. Back row, these guys coming through. Andrew Carlson, Estala Lindholm, Tyler Adams, a good field for this final race of the season. They've all assumed their positions at the starting line. That's where Kate Osborne is right now. Well, there's no doubt that championships are made throughout the season. Tim Trimbley said that he and his team have given their all on and off the track to retain that red plate that he's had since Canterbury. Now, Cody Cam, on the other hand, said they have all the momentum in the world right now with nearly a perfect second half of the season. Although in Iowa, he did thought his championship hopes were gone. But no, it all comes down today. This race. Let's go racing. It's been an incredible weekend, an incredible season. And Mike, it comes down to this very moment. 14 sleds on the starting line. The greatest snow cross racers in the world about to get it on in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Two things to remember, nine laps. Don't forget they've got the Joker lap too, and we'll talk about that during the race. They've got to go uphill that third time, at least one lap. About to go into the starter's hands. 
10 across the front row. Four more in the back. As you can see, the tension on the starting line. Everybody looking around, checking. Now it's in starters' hands. And they are racing in Wisconsin. Both of the, the hill they go. Both the Hanches sleds out front. Look who my took oh the my. hold shot. The stud boy hold shot goes to Cody Cam in a big way. And who's sweeping around the outside, though? A big move on the outside. But Cody Cam shaking free early on here. He's your early race leader. By a wide margin into the turn, and you hear the crowd go wild. He's from Canosa, Wisconsin, and this crowd in Wisconsin is loving what they're seeing. Boy, Ryan Springer right behind him, and look at Lincoln Lemieux. Lemieux trying the inside here but look how strong Ryan Springer is here in this final it's great to see for that young man but the man on point right now is your points leader the championship hinges on this race and the hinges team came out here to do this the right way Cody Cam out front down into that FXR turn it's the last turn they'll come across the Amsoil finish line let's set the order Cody Cam is your leader Lincoln Lemieux now second Ryan Springer third Tim Tremblay fourth and Peter Narsa fifth I said it Tim Tremblay right now in fourth and he's got a lot of room to make up and of course one of the fan favorites Tucker Hibbert sitting in sixth place he's currently third place in points but all eyes right now on the 54 per tech Polaris out of team Hentges Cody Cam your leader and you saw Cody Cam look over his shoulder momentarily he's looking for Tim Tremblay he can't see him he's too far back right now Tremblay battling third and fourth as Cody Cam is way out front Tremblay looked like he may have made a move there and made up some ground on those people in front of him. Actually, he's gotten by Ryan Springer. Right, so yes. Springer falling back, Tremblay starting to move his way up. But there's a lot of pieces that need to fall into the right place for Tim Tremblay to win this championship, even if he wins the race. You are correct. Tim Tremblay is the man in black right there on number 11. Even if he wins this race, if Cody Cam finishes fifth or better, the championship is his. So not only does Tim Tremblay have to get to the lead, he's got to hope Cody Cam has a catastrophe. There you see Tremblay right like there going over the Amsoil finish line through the rhythm section. It's amazing how this track has changed throughout the day, Hawk. They've gone from the inside to way to the outside. That's where they're finding a faster line up the hill. What's even more amazing is how dominant Cody Cam is being right now, and Kate Osborne's got more on our leader. Guys, I can honestly speak that when we walked in into the hauler this morning, the Hinges Racing Hauler, there was a different air about Cody Cam. It was confident, it was calm, it was unlike I've ever experienced. And if his facial reactions could show anything, it meant that he wanted to win. He also said that Tim definitely has more pressure on him today. It's his to lose. It is, and right now, I'll tell you, Cody Camp is doing everything he can, doing everything right, and he's done that all day long here in Lake Geneva. But you know what those roles, what they said this morning have kind of changed. He's now the point leader. It's his to lose, so up front, he's got to keep running solid, and there you see Tremblay. And yeah, that's right, because Tim Tremblay has now gotten by his teammate, Lincoln Lemieux, so your points leader's in first, and your trailing guy right there, Tim Tremblay, has moved into second, so there's your mark from your leader to second but the margin between the points lead and the championship that's pretty big right now yeah, it sure is seven points if they were to finish first second as we see him now Cody Cam would be your champion by seven points you see him come down the hill here he gets set up for that uh, skidoo slingshot down the hill making the turn staying outside it's interesting a lot of the people taking that outside line down on the bottom of the racetrack also Cody Cam back up the hill it's Cam it's Tremblay Lemieux Springer and Narsa your top five here in the final race of the season now let's add a little twist here Hawk we haven't heard from our producer if anyone has taken the Joker Hill yet we know what happened last night Tucker Hibbert got way out in front and then he made the Joker pass on his last lap and went on to win by about three seconds absolutely it did Cody Cam feeling very, very confident right now. Adding a little style over that big set of doubles. Now with five laps to go, the lead continues to grow over Tim Tremblay. And speaking of Tim Tremblay, Kate Osborne's got more on our second place racer. All three rounds here at Lake Geneva leading up to this race. So the two rounds before, Tim Tremblay said that he was taking calculated risk. I asked him this morning, now what? He says, going all in. Yeah, no more time to be calculated about anything. You got to get to the front right now. Tim Tremblay's got a, quite a mountain to climb, Mike. Well, he not only needs to take risks, but he's got to have some luck here. Racer's luck is part of racing. You know, Cody looking to be very solid out in front of this racetrack as he goes up the second uphill. Tim needs to run hard, stay where he's at. And, you know, he's going to need 
Cody to have some misfortune here, but Cody looking really solid. Again, today, the third of three in a row here in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, as Corin Todd is off his sled. Looks like at the bottom of the hill over there. He'll get going once again. But again, the third race in a row at this racetrack. When Cody Cam got here on Friday for round 15, he was plus 20 points behind Tim Trimble. 28 points. He's reeled him in in every race by being perfect in almost every race. And right now, he's way out front. The lead is now five seconds over Tim Trimble. Yep, and you have to think, how long will he wait before he makes his joker pass? A lot of the people thought that if you're out front, you've got clean running, you've got no sleds in front of you. Wait till the end. Take your chance towards the end. If you're more in the middle of the pack, well, you may want to gamble a little bit. We, again, haven't heard if either he or Tim Tremblay have made their pass yet. You know, Cody Cam said after round 16, when Tucker Hibbert got the win because made Cody Cam went up early. Yes, you're right. He said he made a mistake. He should have waited. Tucker Hibbert waited until the last lap in round 16. I bet Cody Cam does the same here this afternoon. So it's still Cam out in front. Tremblay Lemieux, Springer in fourth, Narsa, Pauline, Hibbert sitting in seventh, and then Renheim, those are your top eight. Just cruising on cruise control is Cody Cam right now. Out of the FXR final turn, over the AMS oil finish line. Three laps from the win. Three laps from a championship in front of his hometown crowd is Cody Cam. There you see, that is Tremblay. I'm sorry, Tremblay right ahead. That was Lemieux Lincoln that we Lemieux. were watching. And, you know, we've talked about that, too. Lemieux's got his own little battle going with one of the Hench's teammates, Peter Narsa. That a battle for 4-5. But there you see Tremblay back up to the top. Boy, trying everything that he can. But Cody just continues to put a few tenths of a second between he and Tim Tremblay each lap. And there's your battle again. That's for the final spot on the podium, which means a lot, especially in the final race of the year, and especially for a guy like the 541 there of Ryan Springer. He's been very fast all weekend long, and this would be a great exclamation point on his season to find a way onto the podium. To do that, he's going to have to get around Lincoln. Lemieux. And we're hearing from our producers that the top four have not, have not taken the joker yet. So as we come down to almost two laps left to go, none of them have gone to the top side. It looks like Tucker Hibbert is the only racer who has gone on that joker lap, and right now the T-Train running in sixth. Again, we watch Lincoln Lemieux. He's in third, the last spot on the podium. There's your leader with two laps to go. Cody Cam has a 5.3 second lead over Tim Tremblay at Up the top of the hill. The big hill, then he makes the turn. He'll come down the shoot away. Watch this as he comes in, he takes the jump and there he goes downhill. Boy, being very, very conservative right there. You know they tell him on his pit board how big a lead he's got. At this point, you want to make sure you take no chances. He's keeping that track on the snow as much as possible. He's very, very fast and very smooth up the hill, taking the outside line to avoid traffic. Everything going right for Cody Cam right now. You know, sometimes you're faster when you're in the air. Sometimes you're faster with your track on the ground. He just being very consistent, staying low to the Whoa. ground and making his way around the racetrack. Will he go up? No, he does not. Just so as you said that. waiting until the last lap. He got a little squirrely, just as you said that, coming down the hill. But out of the FXR final turn, the white flag flies. Kenosha, Wisconsin's Cody Cam is one lap from a championship in Wisconsin. There is Tremblay, and I think Tremblay did go topside. Tremblay, I believe, did take the joker pass. So now that's going to enter into this just a tad bit. But the lead is 10 seconds now. Again, Cody has to take that long lap, but he's got a giant lead. I doubt that Lincoln Lemieux, who's now in second, can make up 10 seconds even with the Joker lap. There goes Cody Cam to the bottom of the hill one more time. Around the Fox turn and up the hill he goes towards the Air Force flyaway, Mike. Second uphill, you see him to the top. And like you said, he's moved outside. I think that inside's gotten so chewed up that they're finding the outside much smoother up there. He'll come down the U.S. Air Force flyaway. This time, he's got to go back up topside, Hawk. Cody Cam, the 53. He makes that right turn. Now he'll go up the hill. A bit of a bog, but up the hill goes Cody Cam. Around the snake pit by the Ram Rebel. Down the hill comes Cody Cam. The right hand turn into the FXR final turn for the final time. The checkers and the championship go to Cody Cam in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. A giant win in front of his hometown crowd, and he wins by five 
seconds over Tim Tremblay, who will take second, and Tucker Hibbert will take third, Mike. You know, the interesting thing, too, it's interesting that that's about the interval that he had. Boy, and I'll tell you what, I'm so uh, happy to see that. These two guys have been kind of gnawing on each other all weekend for Tim to stop by. Good, clean racing and that. But you know what? Tremblay was about five and a half seconds behind when they started making the Joker pass. That's what the differential was in the final results. What a dominating performance for your winner and your champion. I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Kate Osborne, we'll talk to him when we come right back. It's the Amsoil Championship Snow Cross powered by Ram Series on the CBS Sports Network. We'll be right back. Shot goes to Cody Cam in a big way. Now with five laps to go, the lead continues to grow over Tim Tremblay. He is way out front. The lead is now five seconds over Tim Tremblay. Right hand turn into the FXR final turn for the final time. The checkers and the championship go to Cody Cam in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. A fairy tale win, no doubt about it. Cody, you had an injury mid-season that you didn't even know if you're going to be able to keep riding, coming in with almost a nearly perfect end of the second half of the season. Into this weekend, knowing you had some chasing to do, how would you describe the weekend overall? Uh, yeah, I had a lot of ups and downs this year, and I uh, had a crash and separated my shoulder and just thought I was done after that. And the first race back, I won, and just... Uh, was riding really good after that, just lots of pain. And this weekend, I felt great. Um, no shoulder pain at all. And I, uh, I got second once this weekend. I won all my races, uh, eight out of nine of them. And just uh, really pumped about that. And I got the red number plate now and the championship. And just, uh, it, uh, just couldn't do it with everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank Polaris, Henches Racing, Monster Energy, FXR, Pertec, Ergodyne, EVS, uh, the W Training Facility for keeping me healthy, or trying at least, and just uh, Walker Evans Suspension for keeping me smooth on the track, and just everybody, this is just a dream come true, and uh, gonna have fun tonight. <laughs> Getting a little emotional there, but a very well-deserved win and championship in front of his hometown crowd. What a great time it was to watch him do that and to battle with Tim Tremblay. Mike, your final thoughts on this fantastic season. What a great year it's been. You know, you take a look at the championship here in Pro Open and in all the classes, but Pro Open, you know, Tim Tremblay, very solid, and it's amazing how Cody was able to come back after his injury, like he said, kind of whittle it down, whittle it down, whittle it down. Here's the way they end up in the final. Cody Cam taking the win, Tim Tremblay second, Tucker Hibbert. Good finish for him. He'll end up third in points, too. And there's the way the top ten finished. What a great year. What a great season. Again, congratulations to Hinges Racing, Cody Cam, and to all our competitors in all our classes. What a year we have had in Amsoil World Championship Snowcross, powered by Ram, and a great way to end it all weekend long. The battles were intense. Stick around. The PBR Ty Murray Invitational is next on the CBS Sports Network. For Mike Schroeder, Kate Osborne, and our entire crew, my name is Chris Hockey. This has been a presentation of the CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Have a great day, everybody.